So I hope everyone can see my screen very clearly. So I'm going to hide this uh, on the right side. Okay, so um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Ramya Rajendran, uh, and uh, I currently work as uh, authorization or uh, certification design assurance engineer uh, at Bombardier Transportations. So today um, I'm going to uh, share a quick insight about what happens uh, in the industry. So either it can be like aircraft industry or the railways industry. Uh, so let's start. So hope everyone is uh, uh, staying safe and uh, maintaining a good distance uh, for because of the corona. And I hope you all have your masks ready and then you wash your hands that much so that corona can like go away. Um, so let's hope that uh, uh, nothing bad happens and uh, we, we all stay safe, okay? Um, so to avoid this, obviously I know like people, uh, especially it's quite late in the evening and uh, I know people are like quite sleepy and sometimes especially like after lecturing people sleep and you know snore and everything. So I'm just going to ask some two or three questions you can answer in your own time, you know, uh, either in the chat or uh, uh, you can answer your questions to the professors and the lecturers uh, who are uh, like given me this opportunity today to um, explain what is happening in the industry. Yeah. So let's start with the presentation. And before going into the presentation, I'm just going to quickly uh, speak about myself. Uh, so I did my bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering from Tagore Engineering College and then I did my master's from Imperial College and as you can see the uh, title of my master's is quite long so I'm not going to read that out uh, because uh, I think pretty much I'll finish up the entire time just to read the title uh, and then after that I worked uh, as a graduate training engineer at Aircraft Research Association in Bedford in UK um, and then uh, after that I worked with uh, Airbus uh, as lightning direct effects engineer where I was doing a uh, certification of the aircraft. Uh, and then after that I worked uh, with uh, Airbus again uh, as uh, aircraft uh, landing gear systems engineer and focal point. So uh, when I was doing the lightning direct effects engineer, the main work uh, which I did was uh, with A400M, a military aircraft. Uh, and then uh, A350, uh, extra wide body, I'm sure everybody should should know uh, because uh, most of the students here are like from uh, aerospace background. So uh, A350 is a very robust and a very good uh, uh, product to be honest because that's like, it is made of like composite, uh, composite and metallic together. So it is like, uh, it is like one of the advanced versions of aircrafts which you can see uh, around uh, in, the, in the aircraft industry. Uh, and then uh, uh, I, I worked uh, as aircraft landing gear systems engineer. Uh, again, this was for A350 uh, and also for A330 and uh, A320 aircrafts uh, to fit the uh, tire pressure indication system. So that's a very small system. But again, that's also related to like product development and certification. So currently, now I'm working uh, with Bombardier Transportations uh, as the design assurance engineer. And uh, a quick thing, just uh, for everyone's information, Bombardier, it not only manufacture, manufactures aircraft, it also manufactures trains uh, for London and uh, all over the United Kingdom. And uh, uh, they have like loads of different branches all over Europe. Uh, they also have a branch in Hyderabad uh, for the software, just for the software side. Uh, so in Canada, they do the aircraft and then in United Kingdom, in uh, the place where I live in Derby, uh, they do manufacturing of trains. So pretty much we have like 5,000 people working in, in Bombardier Transportations in Derby. Okay, so, so today uh, I'm going to share uh, the insight which I know about certification for both trains and for aircraft. So wherever is possible, I'm going to compare aircraft with the trains or trains with the aircraft. So currently I'm doing certification of trains. However, 
it is all very similar to how we certify a, a aircraft okay so if you look at any uh, aircraft or like uh, or like trains okay what they do is they don't invent uh, they don't invent things uh, from scratch yeah so what they do is they have like an existing product and then they try to uh, they try to like um, they try to just develop uh, the product from the existing product because th this kind of product so for example like like trains or like aircraft they are all like very big products the timeline which takes for for uh, someone to develop a train is going to be like 5 years 5 years approximately like 3 to 5 years let's say and then for aircraft it can be like 10 years if the if there is a existing aircraft so for example uh, airbus we have like a320 family and then they now they are developing like a350 family so the time which took for airbus is like around uh, 10 years or like 15 years let's say but if they are going to create a new aircraft from scratch it, it can take up to like 25 years so as you can see the life cycle of airplane is much bigger so i'm going to just take trains as an example and you can apply this to aircrafts yeah so the place where i work is bombardier transportations and they and they have like aventra family aventra family so we have like different types of uh, train and then they different types of train which are modified to the customer requirements but it's from the same base so the main ingredient of the train it, it remains the same they just change like only like 25 percent of the train to fit to different customers so they name the train uh, train to be like with different names okay uh just a quick question i can see like people are uh, people are like raising their hands it does anyone have like any questions uh question answers i think we can have in the last part okay so i'll just continue with my presentation you can continue. finally we can do that for the part yeah okay no problem so so I'll just continue with the presentation. If you have any questions, just write it down somewhere and then I can answer all your questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, so this is like the Aventra family, a family of trains. So similar to this one, you can see the same thing for Airbus family. So as I said previously, so here we can see like A350 extra wide body. So here you can see this is like Dash 800, Dash 900 series. This is Dash 1000 series. So the, the, the difference between all these things is nothing but they have changed the capacity of the people. So the number of seats inside different uh, flights is like different. That's the only difference which they would have made. Other than that, pretty much everything else with, with this family is same. So it's exactly the same composite uh, aircraft. And then, so for example, this is, this is one of the aircrafts which I worked on, so A400M for Lightning. And then A330 family, this is A320 family. So as you can see, everything is very similar. So the product, they have like a base product from which they do like derivatives by changing pretty much like 20 to 30 percentage of the design to suit different customers' requirements. Okay. So uh, when we have a project from scratch so let's say i'm going to build an aircraft from scratch so if if i am airbus and if i have to build a uh, aircraft from scratch what are the things which happens so why am i creating a aircraft so the first thing is requirement so for example emirates or like uh, lufthansa or um, any other big airlines they might say okay i have i have a need for like increasing the fleet yeah so what they do is they want more flights so they say like oh airbus can you have can you give us like more flights so they'll they'll open up a tender system so they'll say like airbus or boeing or anybody whoever is like doing the manufacturing can apply for this tender so they they give us they give a tender okay 
and then they say like whoever wants to participate they can apply for the tender so this is this is called like initial uh, invitation to tender okay so let's say i'm lufthansa so what happens is lufthansa will say okay i need like 100 aircraft this is the budget okay any company can apply for the tender so now airbus boeing bombardier everybody will say like okay i want to do this i want to win the project and i wanted to manufacture airplanes so this 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 is called the pre bid phase okay this is called the pre bid phase where they have where airbus will put some kind of a strategy to say what is the product which they are ready to offer for for the uh, airlines and then what is their performance what's their uh, capacity how how they can do maintenance everything so they have like a very very big design pack where they bundle up information and then they keep it ready they also do like opponent assessment so for example airbus can do an opponent assessment for boeing saying like oh is boeing capable of doing the manufacturing or are we capable so they just try to like highlight all their uh, uh, positive points okay to the to the uh, airline and then they, they put the bid to uh, win the contract so that's the, that's the pre bid phase and then they do the bidding phase so where they bid so they they put the information okay and then lufthansa for example let's say they select airbus for doing a350 aircraft for, uh, to to give them orders like 1000 aircrafts or like 500 aircrafts or like 20 aircrafts whatever it is so that's like that's the bid phase so which means it, that at this point of time the bid is approved so airbus is selected as the uh, as the potential bidder and uh, the contract is awarded to airbus okay so that's uh, that's the notice to proceed phase so that's that's when it's official that airbus has won the contract now airbus will deliver like 20 aircrafts to lufthansa okay so that, that so the this is the phase so this is this is called as business case so this is how any company works irrespective of whether it's airbus or whether it's boeing or whether it's bombardier it can change the names depending on the company yeah so what happens is uh, so here we have like uh, gate reviews so at different stages we have like gate reviews uh, I, i'm not going in depth into these things because it's it's a very big field okay i'll just give you an insight of what what exactly is happening in the industry so now airbus will start to work on the project to uh, create a new aircraft of 20 20 aircraft let's say of a350 so they'll start up with the startup phase they'll have a design okay they'll have a concept not a design so they'll have a concept in place where, where they'll say okay we will uh, for a350 we'll have a new engine option uh, and then we'll give a we'll have an aircraft which is really lightweight and then we'll have a very efficient aircraft because it's very lightweight and it's fuel efficient it's carb it's made of composites for like 50 to 80 percent of the air, airplane is composite etc etc so they have like a concept and then they do uh, they they mature the concept and then they freeze the concept at this point of time okay the concept is frozen so at this point of time the concept is not going to change the aircraft will remain the aircraft concept will remain the same so after that they start to design the aircraft so where they'll do, create like drawings what parts needs to come in okay what uh, components needs to go in so for example they need to have brakes they need to have like uh, uh, propulsion like engines who's going to be the engine provider etc etc so they'll they'll start to like design like things at this at this point of time so here they have like the uh, here they have like the preliminary design freeze and then they'll have the detailed design freeze where this, it's like matured design so at this point of time the design is frozen okay so they'll exactly know who's going to deliver the engines they'll exactly know who's going to deliver the uh, tires who's going to deliver the brake system who's going to uh, deliver the fuel system etc etc and then at this point of time what they'll do is they'll start to construct the first aircraft or the first train whatever it is whatever the product is they'll start to create the first uh first aircraft okay and then because we also have like requirements at the at the initial point right from the customer so they just at this point of time what they'll do is they have like a first air 
aircraft which is built, which is ready for validation. So they have to check whether this product is what Lufthansa asks for, right? Because they can't give, they can't just say, oh, I've built a plane. I can't just chuck it to Lufthansa. They have to test this, whether this uh, aeroplane is like the right product for Lufthansa. So they'll do like loads of testing, okay? And then once the testing is done, this is where authorization or certification happens. Okay, I'll, I'll go in depth in, in the upcoming slides. Okay, and then once the certification is done, then they'll start to do the serial production, which means instead of doing just one aircraft at a time, they'll start to manufacture like 20 or 50 aircrafts at the same time. Okay, and then once that's done, okay, they deliver everything to Lufthansa and Lufthansa is like, okay, now doing the operation which is called uh, at this point of time, so end of realization, field support. So Airbus will provide some field support because sometimes the product might have like little things uh, which they need to fix or they, they need to tweak depending on the customer. So they do like little improvements at this point of time. And then once that's done, they, they hand over the product completely to Lufthansa and then they just support only the operation and maintenance, okay? This is a very overall picture, okay? This this. This complete phase can happen anywhere uh, between uh, three to five years for a train, for the manufacturing of a train. And this can happen for uh, like 10 to 15 or 25 years for aircraft. So it takes that much time. So I'm just explaining everything in a very short period of time. So if you have any questions, we can speak at the end of the presentation. Okay. So everything, any product, okay, the recycle, it just fits, it starts from here. The startup okay it starts from here and then it ends almost here okay so the v cycle this is the process this is the process how airbus develops any product or uh, bombardier develops any product so the any product any product irrespective of whatever it is aircraft or train they always start with the requirements okay requirements so requirements there are different types of requirements so for example, we have customer requirements, which is let's say Lufthansa, and then safety requirements. That's that's from the uh, um, government. Okay, it can be for example for uh, for uh, trains uh, in UK we have Office of Road and Rail. Okay, for uh, uh, air aircraft we have like EASA. Okay, so in India we have. Uh, uh, no, in, in US we have F, FAA, and then I think in India it's uh, Airport Authority of India. So they have like different requirements from different different governments, let's say that way, okay? And then reliability requirements. So you don't want to have a train or a flight which breaks down in like two days. You want it to have it op, uh, oper, operable and reliable for the complete life of the aircraft, like 25 years for the aircraft. And then for like, uh, for like trains, it can be like 20 years, let's say. And then we have like infrastructure requirements or compatibility requirements. So for trains, it is, uh, it is uh, the requirements from the track and the surrounding, uh, like, you know, like tunnels and things like that. But in aircraft, so for example, you have like um, uh, airports. So airports have like specific requirements, okay? And then maintainability, yeah, it is the maintenance of the aircraft. So you want it to be main, maintainable as well. So you don't want to buy a car which is not, which is like so expensive to maintain. So you have to like cut down the cost, at, cost of those requirements. So they have like requirements for every single, uh, every single, um, from every, for like every single uh, perspective. Okay. So, and then they have like company requirements or internal requirements. All the, good practices which you would have uh, got from like previous projects and then um, you know like uh, EN standards, uh, ISO standards etc and then we have the standard requirements again this is from the government for trains this is from the government and for flights again it is from EASA or like uh, local government wherever the aircraft is flying okay so all these requirements what will happen is all these requirements will get captured inner tools called doors okay so just just this is like a just a screenshot of how doors look like okay basically so all the requirements from all these people are like are like kept in doors okay 
so for example this is this is like one of the um, one of the example from the customer so this is like a customer requirement so the customer has asked for for a train or a flight to be this length or this width or this capacity so things like that so we import all the requirements into doors door is nothing but a tool okay so uh, this one what what happens next is all these requirements get allocated to the specific teams so if you imagine airbus airbus has like 10000 people so you have to allocate it to like the correct set of people for example you don't want a requirement from uh, from propulsion system going into like brake system because they are like two different teams right so so we have like allocation which is nothing but you have to send the requirements to the correct set of people so you allocate it to the right people rm is nothing but requirements management the process so th again this is the process how airbus or like bombardier works with okay so and then once it's sent to let's say uh, let's say for um, uh, we have a requirement where it says the aircraft uh, the aircraft uh, needs to have uh, five seats or something okay so uh, let's say the seat the seat color needs to be orange in color so that let's say that goes into like the people who work with uh, compartments and you know compartments and uh, cabin or let's say okay pilot seat so pilot seat goes to cabin cabin team okay then they have to check whether it's their requirement or not so they have to say oh yes it is my requirement so you don't want like a, a propulsion requirement to go into cabins because it's not their requirement so they they assume the ownership so that's this thing okay and then when they have the requirement they just have to say how they are going to satisfy the requirement so the requirement is what we have to have a seat which is orange in color okay so now the engineer from the cabin seat system what they'll say is yes the seat color will be orange in color because the design of seat is blah blah, blah. so they have to write an explanation to say how their design of that seat is going to satisfy the customer's requirement okay and then they have to validate the requirement so uh, what they have to do is how they'll tell the customer that it's going to be orange. So they have to say, okay, I'm going to share like a document to the customer. Okay. And then the last one is conformance, which means the evidence. So they have to show a drawing or a picture of, of the uh, cabin seat to be orange in color. So that's the document, which, which, which is like the conformance evidence, the actual evidence for the customer's requirement, which is the question okay so uh, this is like an example of how many teams work in a specific uh, project so this is like every single box is like a team of people okay so aircraft is much more bigger so if you can imagine so this this architecture is uh, oops so this architecture is um uh, this architecture is uh, imagine like 5,000 people working on, on this architecture. So you have like 5,000 people in different teams working for this complete architecture. But in air, in airplanes, like with Airbus, it will be like 15,000 people working on the same thing. Okay. So again, in the V structure, so we we finished these specifications, which is nothing but the requirements from the customers. Okay. Next is the requirements will get split into different levels. So we have like the top level system level, which is the flight level. Okay. So there are like requirements where it says like the flight needs to be yellow color or the flight needs to be in, uh, flight needs to have air conditioning, et cetera, et cetera. So those are like aircraft level requirements. Okay. So those things are dealt by these people, like integration people and performance people. So for example, performance related requirements, you have like, uh, um you know the reliability of the aircraft needs to be this much the uh, availability uh, and maintainability of the aircraft needs to be this much uh, so those kind of requirements are like top level requirements and they are managed by quite like the top level people who who deal with requirements at flight level so they also validate the requirement at flight level okay so and then uh, the next step is the module level module level is for example when when uh, there is a requirement where for example it says that 
okay they, we need to have a, a fuel system okay so that's aircraft level requirement now okay we have a fuel system but the fuel system needs to have like pumps and valves and you know different sub components so again they'll they'll have those things at this level okay that is module level so we have like one module there it is just related to fuel system so we have like fuel system and then fuel system needs to uh, interact with the, um, the brain of the computer uh, the brain of the flight so the computers all the computers and then it needs to interact with the, the altitude so it, it has like different things so this at this level it's like different modules so avionic module you have like uh, um, fuel module and then um, uh, monitoring module so we have like different modules at this level and then the next so this is this is like for example all the functions where you test all the functions okay so for example if you press a button in the cabin obviously you want the lights to uh, glow up inside the cabin right so those kind of uh, those kind of things is like done at module level okay the next one is component level this is like the lowest level uh, this is nothing but your your further subdividing the system into like simple equipments okay so for example uh, this is this is again an example from uh, frames but again it's very similar for a airbus or like aircraft field as well so uh, so you have like you know like uh, lights in the front or like lights in the cabin you have like communication system so there is a phone for communication there is a uh, button for uh, dialing up so those kind of like little components or like little equipments that's what th this is all made up of so there is a team which works for those equipment and then these are uh, procured from the um, from the suppliers directly so that's where you have like for example you have uh, uh, for engines you have like rolls royce and then for uh, landing gear you have like messier bagatti um, so these are like some companies example of some companies okay uh, so where does design assurance fit into these things okay so for design assurance or certification the people who deal with certification they pretty much start from the start from the beginning of the v-cycle to the end of the v-cycle okay the v-cycle works from here at the requirements stage and then it moves down and then it moves up so we we start to work from the uh, beginning of the product development to the end of the product development and we so so th this is like all the other additional teams who are non-technical but still they are technical so we don't uh, for design assurance we don't deal with specific systems we just deal with the complete train or the complete aircraft to get it certified and fl fly for passenger service okay so this is again the same thing so you have like a subsystem of the components level that's the lowest level where you have like uh, where you get the boxes if you imagine like all the equipments as boxes so you get the boxes from different people, uh, from different uh, su suppliers. So for example, Rolls-Royce will provide engine and then Messier Bagatti will provide like landing gear. And then what these people will do, the vehicle architecture or the functional uh, functional level, they'll put all those components in the, in the specific places. So engine, they'll mount it on the nacelle or, uh, yeah. And then the landing gear, they put it on under the fuselage and things like that. So they do that and then they test whether what they have integrated is performing well or not okay and then here we have the performance so for example performance obviously when you integrate the engine you have to have some performance related test so your engine has to run at this many rpms per minute uh, it has to stop at at a specific point it has to start at specific point it should not over overheat so so many different things so they do like performance related uh, tests and validation activities so these people they they deal with the conceptual design till the um, uh, till the testing and to attain like specific specific performance related goals okay 
and then this is like operability and so this these people they do test at aircraft level at top level okay um so again yeah it's it's nothing but you can see uh, the last column right that's the evidence column where we say so this is the requirements from the customer okay and this is the evidence which is linked with the customer so which can satisfy the customer's requirement okay so what are the different types of activities which we can use to satisfy the customer's requirement so we can use things like drawings calculations so for example if the customer says like oh i want a i want a seat which is like uh, which which has a height of uh, specific meters then yeah you can just show a drawing to say like yes this this seat is like one meter or whatever right so next one is supplier information so there are like when you get the boxes so for example rolls royce so rolls royce when they supply the engine they also supply you with documentations and test reports which they would have performed at their level so sometimes you can use those test results to satisfy the customer requirement and then you can also carry over evidence from the previous project so for example we have a320 and then we have a350 so let's say we have like a communication system which is same as a320 so some of the results we can carry over from a320 to a350 saying that it's the same part number okay and then the test evidences so again you can perform a test if it is a brand new system which you are going to put only in a350 so you can perform the test from scratch okay so here it says a uh, train testing so here they can do like simulation they can do like train zero testing which means that they have like a uh, they have like a set of computers which looks like a train okay and then they do the functional testing so which is mainly based on the rig so it's rig it's it's not an actual train or a flight so it's a test rig where they have the actual softwares which are available on the aircraft or train they do the same thing here so they they can test for example i have a new software i wanted to i wanted to like put it on the aircraft i can't go stop the aircraft every single time to put the uh, to test the software so i can do locally in my uh, test lab to check whether the software is operating properly or not okay once it's operating properly then i can integrate the software into the aircraft which is easier and less less cost i mean it's so cost effective as well okay so uh, and then uh, so you have like uh, derby test track so this is for the trains so where you can test the trains locally inside the site in the same way when i used to work with the airbus they have a filton airfield which is which was meant only for performing airbus uh, related test activities and now they have closed the airfield because of different issues so, so so it's like only available for only available for like uh, filton people okay and then the next one is like you can also have like other test tracks outside and then you can go on network testing which means so for trains you can go into the actual uh, network where they have all the passenger trains which are running to do the testing which is so expensive and or for the flights so for example they can go to the uh, go to the actual aeroplane and they can do like flight tests okay so once uh, they can do flight tests also they can do like take off and you know uh, take off and landing test on the actual airport where they have like people so where they have like all the other passenger traffic as well okay so this the, this is the um, complete requirements management process which i was like explaining okay so in design assurance so what we do is these are the work which which are done by the engineers all the system specialists design assurance what we do is actually we check all the work which has been done since the beginning of the project till the end end of the project we collect all the evidences and package it up uh, in the form of a file called technical file okay it can it can vary uh, so this technical file will have all the information required uh, from uh, the specification of the flight okay till the design and then uh, what are the test evidences which we have done uh, so all the all the work which we have done for the past two years or three years for the train or the all the work which we have done for like past uh, 
six years or seven years for the aircraft everything is like put into a single file okay called as technical file so we also what we do is we also do something called as uh, compliance reports this compliance report is for trains and uh, for the uh, aeroplanes it's called a certification report okay that's like the answers of saying how we are going to certify the trains uh, trains or how we are going to certify the aircraft so we put all the evidences in one place at top level okay so for example this this one is like a export of a compliance report so all the doors work which we did right we export that into a compliance report which looks like this okay so once we have these reports we put that in the form of a, a form of a folder okay so you can see here like for example uh, just for the certification of trains uh, it has like 626 files the work which we have done for the past uh, three or four years yeah if you look at aircraft similarly it will be more than this it will be at least double or triple of this number so we put everything in in a folder and then we we submit it to the authorities so here this is called as the product so we are at kind of at the end of the product okay so for example here the product is a, a class 710 a low train which is london overground train okay or um, so this is just an example of how we have come to the you know the end of the product life cycle so for example this is like uh, a350 dash 1000 so again you know we end up like packaging it it, it it into one and then we say what are the um what are the uh, end results of all the testing which we have done so we package that up into a folder and then we submit it to the authorities authority is nothing but a government body okay so for trains uh, this is how a certification will look like so this is a letter from the authorities called office of road and rail this is for uk okay for india it's different for other countries is different so office of road and rail they say okay yes we have assessed your product so we submit that file and then they assess the product and then they say yes it is good to go into passenger traffic okay so these are the train numbers which which are allowed to run under this letter okay similarly for aircraft from easa okay for so which is uh, european union uh, aviation safety agency I'm, I'm sure everybody would have heard about them so what they do is they do they give a similar letter and then they say these are the aircraft types so which can run under which can run uh, under this certificate this is called as type certificate okay so we are pretty much at the end of this this uh, authorization or certification phase so once it's done then they'll start to do the serial production where they'll they'll uh, because you have already type certified so you have certified a type okay now you can copy paste the type which means you can manufacture like the like several other products from that so for example a350 dash 1000 so you can have flight number one flight number two flight number three flight number four up to 100 or whatever until the certification is valid so you can do mass production here okay so pretty much that's the end of my uh, slideshow yeah so if you have any questions you can ask me uh, my uh, only um, advice to all the people or the students here would be always aim higher okay you can you can definitely uh, achieve success okay so as i've said here uh, aim high be cool every minute is precious okay reflect before you act see the world be up to date which is very very important push hard to achieve your goals okay so always stay positive don't give up on your dreams so uh, i almost complete my presentation so if you have any questions Please, you can uh, feel free to ask me.